Hello everyone, my name is Matt. It's my pleasure to give you a demo of the Pantheon website management platform for Drupal and WordPress, and specifically our Quicksilver platform hooks. This is a feature that we've added recently for developers who want to hook into various operations that happen on the Pantheon platform. For example, when code's committed to the master branch, or things are deployed between environments, databases are cloned, or cache is cleared, you can run custom PHP code to do additional development and automatic tasks. To show this off, I've created a demonstration site that I showed off at DrupalCon New Orleans. It's a site built in Drupal 8, and it utilizes a configuration management system. And what's really great about it is that we sort of set it all up, we've exported all the configuration to code, and we've wired in a number of different integrations for Quicksilver that I can show off. Sort of to get going, what we'll do is we jump to our dev site here, dev dash, and we're going to go ahead and make a sort of basic change to the block system. The block system in Drupal 8 is quite a bit more powerful than previous versions of Drupal, and the specific configuration and configuration all exist uh, within inside of the code. So when I do a sort of change here, like I'll move around the sidebar elements from the right sidebar region to a left sidebar region, and save them, this is information that can now be exported to the data to, to the file system in the form of YAML files. To do that, we can run a, a drush config export command using our terminus, Pantheon's command line interface. Or we can use a sort of patch on the uh, devel config module that allow us with a sort of button to export our configuration to disk. This is something that's made possible on Pantheon using our SFTP mode, which makes your file system writable for the development. So if we go back to our site, we'll notice that we have two files that are be, uh, ready to be committed. These are two YAML files that deal with the configuration of the individual blocks. And you'll see the change is relatively minor. We change the sidebar from the second region to the first region, and it's the same on the other one. So with a little bit of uh, cleverness, switching up the sidebars today, we'll give it a little commit. And now on our behalf, Pantheon is actually going to make a git commit to this code base. Something just, you know, hey, we've got this now in the code base. Anyone who has a checkout will be able to access it. And as sort of part of our integrations, we'll start to see over here on our Slack, we actually have sort of been told that there is a git commit. It happened to me, by me. Here's the, the hash of it. And the message was switching up the sidebars. And that's pretty cool. If you're a team that's working with a chat system like, like Slack or HipChat or other kinds of systems that you can integrate with, you can have Pantheon actually tell those chats when specific commits are made. Now that can get a little noisy potentially, but it also could keep the team informed of what's going on. Sort of depends how you want to do it. Where we get to see a lot of real power though is when we actually move that commit from the dev environment we were playing around into a test environment. This is a situation where we actually have the ability to do a lot of different automatic testing to our site. That one of the things that we sort of live in a world where robots are going to quickly drive our cars and deliver us packages, it's probably at about time that robots also help test our websites. So one of the things that we've done using Quicksilver is actually bundle a number of different kinds of technologies into the actual, uh, into the deployment. So when I hit this button, it's actually going to set up my test environment. It's going to take all the configuration, that change that I have in dev, and it's going to move it to the test environment. It's also going to take a, a database dump from live and move back all the files so that we have this version of our test environment that looks and feels very much like our live environment. And of course, it's going to tell me here on the Slack that a deploy has happened. This is something as a team I'm going to be very interested in knowing when code is being deployed to test and also to live in my projects because that may affect sort of, sort of my work. Um, and this is all done using uh, an example Quicksilver plugin that will be linked in this blog post that shows how you can actually use uh, integrate Slack to show off various you know, uh, integrations. We also have here a sort of a Drush operation just kicked off. As sort of part of a good best practice workflow using configuration management in Drupal 8, you're very much going to want to commit all of your configuration to code. You're also going to be very interested when you move to test and live to have that configuration automatically imported into that, into that environment. But this should be something you can do a dry run deployment and have everything sort of be configured the way you want. You shouldn't have to log into the site, fiddle with some settings to actually get this right. And with a little bit of Drush integration using um, this workflow, every single time to run config import and take your new stuff. But, uh, you know, wait, there's more. There's, as developers, a number of different tests that we're interested in doing every time we really do a deployment. 
And in this case, we've integrated with three services that actually help developers you know, do even cooler stuff. The first is using cross-browser testing with SpotBot. The second is using visual regression testing with Backtrack. The third is doing performance testing with Load Impact. Each of these are services that you can run on each deploy to get better testing and information about your site. With cross-browser testing, you're going to want to make sure that every time you do deploy, that your site's going to look and work the way you expect in the major Chrome, Firefox, and Explorer browsers, as well as making sure it works on mobile devices like Android and iOS. These are things that you're probably doing already as part of your development practice, but you may not do for every single commit, for every single browser at all the time. But having the robots do it, make it so that instead of having to fire up that VM to launch IE to make this thing work, you can just click on a single link that's dropped in your Slack and get access to those different screenshots right here. Here we see Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, uh, Google Nexus, and iPhone right here for us to inspect to make sure that the site looks and works the way we expect in those different browsers. For visual regression testing, this is a kind of technology that allows you to actually compare sort of before and after shots of your site. So if you're pushing out a security update, for example, you don't expect to modify the actual visual look of the site. You run a test between the sort of before and after and hope that you see no visual changes. If you are making slight visual changes, you can use visual regression testing to actually compare between the different versions in order to actually see you know, what parts change. It helps you zero in on the kinds of QA and review work that you would want to do. The third teacher is uh, doing performance testing with load impact. This is just doing a sort of standard performance test every time you deploy. One of the great things about the Pantheon architecture is that because we have sort of isolated containers running your site, it's completely fine to run a test on your test environment to sort of simulate a bunch of traffic. And doing so won't actually affect your live environment or the resources allocated for it. In this case, we had just set up a really basic test of 50 virtual users for three minutes going into the site and uh, dropping a link here into the, uh, in, into the Slack. And then it'll actually show us sort of, um, you know, the different information for that test run, how fast individual pages performed, how many, you know, sort of some graphs around all of that, and they'll keep a record so we can actually sort of see, here's all the different, you know, performance things that happened. And that's helpful because you obviously want your site to be running fast and performant, but, you know, you may not have, you know, the time or energy to test it for every single thing. Having these things done automatically by robots as part of your process makes it stronger and more robust. And so looking at those things and we feel those, those kind of tasks work really well, we can go over here to the live environment and with a great deal of confidence actually do a deploy. And uh, it'll sort of same as on Pantheon, it'll actually deploy that code from test to live. And that because we have some uh, integrations in, it'll also tell us here Slack that we've done a deployment. It's obviously great for the team to know that, hey, that deploy has happened. Here's the, you know, who did it what site and, you know, what the message was. But it'll also sort of, you know, uh, run through after it does its normal Pantheon things of, you know, pushing the code out and get everything squared away. It'll also go ahead and kick off uh, that Drush config import as well. That part of, you know, sort of the, the magic of doing a test and then live deployments is that you can do a dry run and test to see and work and exactly how it's going to be. So when you push to live, you're running through the same import process to get the same configuration working. And you have extremely high confidence that because it's the same code, the same database and files, running on the same versions of PHP and uh, MariaDB with the same kinds of optimizations, that once everything gets imported and everything gets cleared, we're going to have a site that looks and works like the ones that we tested, and we can be very happy with that deployment. So these are just a few of the things that uh, you can do using our Quicksilver technology. One of the great things about the technology is that it's very extendable that anything you can do in PHP, you can also do with Quicksilver. And each of the tools that I showed here are things that I like and find useful, but you may have other tools that you like and find useful, and that's awesome. We've linked repository information for each of the examples, so you can try those, as well as a link to our larger Quicksilver repository of examples that has stuff for a bunch of other things. If you use something that's not on there, pull requests are totally welcome. We're happy to build uh, and use this for all, all the kind of developer integrations that you want to do for your site. With that, thanks for watching, and I hope you have fun using Quicksilver.